it down some water after it though. That's fine. F me. If you need to wash it down with this, you can. Uh. Woo! <laughs> Spicy water. <laughs> oh, fantastic noises. Uh. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? Sigma the Wolf here. So, you guys have been watching this series for a while. I've got Doom the Fox out. I've got Ratchet, who's my first. And Terracoon, at the time of this recording, it should be going up in about a week. But since that's nearly done, and I'm just waiting for that to get released, I've actually got myself another person here. I've got Luna the Cute. Hello. <laughs> Coming all the way from Indiana, USA, with 85 followers on Twitter. They mainly do stickers for Telegram users through their commissions. They also did a first-time paddle at MCFC 2018, generating several hundred dollars worth of money for charity and may even be returning back for a panel this year, 2019. Mm -hmm. And is, did that actually end up getting confirmed? Or are you allowed to say? Yeah, uh, we, we already have our room booked. Uh, we aren't going to be in secondary events uh, because we were, but during the, their own scheduling issues. But we got put in, into an auditorium-shaped room that has, like, we counted over 80 seats in it. But we're planning to pack it up this again, again this year and just, okay. just fill it up and make them regret not letting us get into secondary events. Very nice. And I, I'm so sorry because I actually ended up missing that last year. And so it was, There were people lined in the hall waiting to get in. There was a room that was like maybe 20 people for seats. Yeah. And there was just there were so many people crowded and packed into that room. By the end of the con, after the... We print, we made posters and we all signed them and then we donated one of our uh, shirts that we make nice. uh, as well as a package with it and that was for the charity auction and so after calculating everything we made over six hundred and fifty dollars for the charity. And that was the first time. That was our first time doing a panel. So I'm not surprised in any capacity in terms of them bringing you back again. Yeah. For another panel, which I think is absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not mistaken. Uh, you've gone ahead and you've been in the part of the community, I think, for since 2017, so a little over two years. Well, at least go out to the... Yeah, it's been about two years. Yeah, and I think, yeah, 2017, because that's when I debuted this costume, and I actually got a picture with you back then. And yeah. I remember first getting that picture. Yeah. I posted, I think it was in one of the Telegram chats, you're like, oh, wait, I know you. Yeah, yeah, because I actually got a picture with you. Yeah. And, and that one fursuit head that I made terribly. <laughs> <laughs> the head that shall not be named. Yeah, basically. <laughs> it's not a bad head. It's just, it's like, you know, like kids, my first drawing. It's just like uh, my, yeah. my first head. <laughs> I, first of all, I want to thank you coming all the way out here. Coming all the way from Indiana. That was a, you said it was like a three and some odd hour drive for you? Almost a four hour drive. <laughs> yeah. So seriously, thank you so much for coming all the way out here. Uh, now, I've got a few initial questions to ask you before we actually get into our format. Okay. Let any of my viewers know that the last few, which have been through Dune and Terra, they were with hot sauce. Dune was restricted because of medical. Terra ended up choosing that on his own volition because I had Dune and Terra back to back that same day. However, Luna here is a little bit of a partier, as I, I have do. seen and experienced on a personal level, just hanging around you. I'm actually going to bring that up a little bit in our questions. Okay. So hopefully I can get some laughs and backstory, <laughs> and then maybe even some insightful experiences from you, from your experience in the furry fandom so okay. far. Now, I yeah, so far. That, now, with that introductory question, to get my audience familiar with you, let's start with your introduction to the fandom. I know you found out about this fandom through what I saw on your Twitter, because you ended up doing a few Curious Cat, um, like, quick Q&A type of stuff submissions, and it was from an ex that told you that they were a furry, and you were a brony at the time, at which yeah. they showed you some art and then some NSFW content, at which point, quote, it went downhill from there. <laughs> What was your first year of your exploration into the furry fandom past that point? And what eventually got you into uh, your current niche of drawing, own artwork? What was that first year like? And then how did you find out your niche here in drawing? Well, wow, you did your research. <laughs> yeah. I spent a lot of time on your, at least what social media that I could. Okay. Um, and digging into it. Everyone's, everything that I have is attached to my name of Luna Steinman. Everything's just, you type my name is there. But that first year was really interesting, based because the girlfriend at the time, 
she was showing me stuff, and I was like, oh, this is cute, because she was a furry, and it never bothered me, like, furries back then, or whatever, I was just like, all right, people just like animals, whatever, like, I love animals, like, just not to that point of wanting to be in a fursuit or anything, but, uh, then I started getting into it. I was like, oh, yeah, I guess I like this art. This art's cute or whatever. And uh, I, s I was told about Telegram because I, I went on Facebook to find the Fort Wayne local uh, furry group. Yeah. And uh, somebody commented saying, hey, we're mostly on Telegram. We communicate there. Yep. And I was like, okay, sure. So I downloaded Telegram. And like I, I got the link from somebody, and I joined the Fort Wayne local chat, and that was cool. And then I found the Fort. Then they showed me the Fort Wayne not safe for work chat, which I belong there a lot more because I, I say dumb stuff all the time, <laughs> and I say inappropriate stuff all the time. I am not yeah. a safe for work person. You should not bring me around your parents. <laughs> No. Not not saying I'm not like I'm I try to be polite and respectful as like, you know, as I would do with anybody. Right. It's just I I say a lot of dumb stuff. <laughs> but it's it's actually something that my parents end up bringing up of just like, you know what? Normal people aren't fun. The weird people are the fun people. True. Because if everyone was normal True. then life would be boring. No, I'm not normal. Yeah. I can tell you that. <laughs> And I really, I, and it's that kind of feedback where it's like someone will ask like, oh, like how'd you find into it? Like a lot of your introductory questions, but I really like getting into like the deep stuff and because everyone can be like, yeah, I found it because of Sonic or Lion King or Robin Hood or Zootopia, you know, <laughs> modern history. Um, right. <laughs> past that, everyone's like, but what was it like past that? And I appreciate you sharing that experiences. Now. As I had explained before, you, you kind of know the format. You saw Ratchet's interview. You saw a lot of the other ones. Each one of these is actually filled roughly-ish with about a third to a half shot of, of rum. And I, because this is all in the time of recording this, this is all going to go down in a roughly an hour. I'm trying to get you drunk, not dead. So I'm trying to be somewhat... Well, either way is a good, a good achievement goal for me, so... <laughs> well, Kidding. Well, we're, we're going to be hanging out a little bit after this. You know, there's going to be some... Right. Gonna have some room for booze with you then. Oh, yeah. Not strictly this. More but, alcohol. Yes, absolutely. All, always more alcohol. Yes. So, I love booze. Ratchel was otherwise so far has been the only furry that has done this the way that I had originally int intended. You being the second. So, with that said, your viewers know this. I know this, but my viewers don't. You like booze. You really, really like booze. I, I enjoy... Not, not beer, as you've told me before. But you like Dude, beer's beer. gross. It's liquid bread. It is just gross. Like, oh, God. So, so by now, you know, at least with this process of, you know, doing this interview, how deep are you in an alcohol? I know I ended up giving you uh, a mixed drink smoothie. Uh, that's the glass with the metal straw down there in the yeah. corner. Yeah. But, so that was roughly one. I did about a shot of alcohol in there. So it's a very light one. And then you did, what is that, maybe about one and a half? Me. So you're about maybe two in, and you're going to be doing some more. So you're not, I don't think you're quite feeling it yet, are you? Uh, anytime that we're partying with uh, close friends and just uh, with battery acid leak, um, we always say, where are you at? And when we say that, we're always on a scale from one to ten. Five is, all right, not driving, key, stay home, like yeah. not driving, Ubering. Okay. And so, 10 is completely, like, drunk. Positive. Almost not. Positive. Yes. So, yes. So, with that said, in, in uh, good, good nature of what that phrase is, where are you at? Uh, I'm at it, too. Okay, so we got some room. Yeah. All right, so I don't need to be holding anything. I don't want to be having to hold your hair back today or anything there. No. So we're keep down, downing these. Let's go ahead. Let's get this interview started. Now, your Twitter may have only 85 followers, but your YouTube also has 21, at least as of recording this. But you seem, to, you seem to be doing pretty well for yourself, considering you ended up raising $440 on one of your streams a while back. And you also got a lot of commission through stickers, and with that, your artwork has gotten better over time. What was the thing, or a couple of things, that ended up keeping you going on this passion of yours to get better and do more stickers and do artwork and to keep doing this um it's really i owe a lot to uh battery acid leak honestly because uh for you don't know uh battery acid leak is my fiance um and we also have a girlfriend kendra i love you when when i first met him uh I, he did art i mean he, he draws furry stuff and like that was really cool because 
growing up, I've always been a creative person. I was in band for like my whole life. And uh, just so seeing that, seeing the creative side, I was like really drawn to him. And so like part of me said, oh, man, I really wish I could do this, but I'd never drawn before. Yeah. So I, he had this old tablet that he didn't use um, anymore. So I started using that and drawing. Yeah. And it was like, oh God, some of the pictures, like looking back on that. I did not know you had enough pages. That was when I did not scour. Now the reason why I bring this, why I bring this up is, so my viewers don't know this. Uh, Luna does. I've got a projector going against my back wall there, so while I'm looking this way, I can see it. But I've got some of your early artwork from your Twitter up there if you want to turn and look at that real quick. Oh yeah. Now uh, that the one on the left was for um, I did a sticker trade with MLW. I've actually just just now have completely changed my style because the way I've been drawing has been really much of a flat face because I've it was, has it's been more like human than anthro. Yeah. So like I kind of restarted and started from scratch again, relearning how to draw actually furry heads. Yeah, and sometimes you need to restart like that in order to you know. Yeah. To, to progress on, you know, mm -hmm. rather than getting stuck in your rut. Yeah. So, no, I greatly appreciate you carrying that. So the biggest the biggest passion for you ended up being battery acid then, right? Uh, phrasing? The, the, your, your furry friend, not the chemical. Yeah, right. <laughs> mm, love battery acid. I go out to my car every morning for that stuff. <laughs> no, uh, he, he, was, he was a huge, like, influence on me to, to draw, honestly. And then uh, it had to be MLW as well. The first time I met uh, them at a con, seeing their art, like I was just drawn to it. And I'm like, it's, between that, I was just like, I really want to do this. If no one buys my art, if no one looks at it, I don't care. I want to draw because I want to draw. And, like I started just doing free stuff to get practice. Because yep. if like, like I understand being that early, no one wants to buy art from someone who has no idea what they're doing. So I was just like, hey, do something for free, and then. People would be like, oh yeah, free stuff. Oh yeah, I do like $4 stickers right now. Yeah. Like waste up $4 stickers. Yeah. The normal prices I seen are like in between 11 and 15. Holy, okay, so I'm looking in the, I'm not looking in the high end yet. I mean, yeah. That's, that's okay, I can get around, I can get by with that, but no, I, I didn't know they went that high. Yeah. Oh. Well, you, you have to think about it this way. Each picture is its own individual picture being shrunk right. down to scale. Yeah. So it takes a person just as much as time to draw that little sticker yeah. than it does just drawing a big picture. Some people don't understand that and like people do get huffy like, like, oh, that's expensive. I'm like, well, art isn't easy <laughs> or cheap. I need, we need to do a little bit of catch up because I actually forgot to have you do a shot before that question. So you actually need to do the two stainless steel ones. Okay. Here. So you're gonna, if you want to combine them and then just nail them down. Phrasing. You'll be fine, I hope. Now, I had mentioned before that your YouTube channel and you have that series of, if I got this correct, it was Drunk, Drunken Dragons and Dungeons. Drunken Dragons and Dungeons, yes. yes. Which are sometimes two plus hours in length or more. Yeah. I mean, D, D is a long game, it's a long time investment, but you've turned it into such a fun time for yourself and the others that, other players <clears throat> there, by using booze for everyone to see because you've streamed those before. Mm -hmm. Now, with that said, that is only with the cameras rolling. I want to hear one of the stories about the aftermath of one of these videos from so much alcohol intake that you guys have all had collectively. I mean... And if you need a reference point, I've got a tweet there what? that was from your Twitter uh, that you guys oh. have $10, you, do, you all do shots, five, you choose who does a shot, you know, and you can, don you can donate to the call to your guys' channel to help yeah. do that. So what was something that happened, like probably like one of like the nastiest aftermaths that happened after one of those videos? The biggest one I can think is the one where, uh, I don't want to mention his name, the, right. because I don't know if he'd be comfortable with it, but we had a person who straight up donated like $400 to our stream. Oh, geez. And we were drinking just nonstop, and we didn't even st we we went from playing D and D straight to Smash Bros. Because uh, on on the Wii, <laughs> the, the Switch on the Switch or whatever, and then like everybody else got tired, and here I was still uh, streaming. Oh, that's right, I got in my undies. <laughs> Please tell me more. Oh God, 
I'm trying to remember. Like, well, I mean, with more the dog, no! you guys kind of had this down the bottle. Yeah, no, I was I actually was in my swimsuit because people were donating more money still. And so, like, like somebody sent a message, like, get nude. And it's like, I'm not getting nude on camera because this goes on YouTube. So yeah. uh, I put on a, my swimsuit or whatever, and a battery got down into his uh, undies. Oh, <laughs> and we're sitting on the couch playing Smash Bros. at, like, <laughs> 2 in the morning. <laughs> One of the times I know we battery battery hit his limit. He had a, he had a terrible moment once with just alcohol. I think it was after a session and just like he gets very defensive. Like as soon as he starts getting sick, like I'll try to come into the bathroom. He's like, no, don't look, and like you just hear him throwing up, whatever. And like, oh, and he dropped his phone in the toilet. That's when I went in. I was flushing the toilet as he was throwing up, like to get it just down and get yeah. it down. And then he dropped in his dropped the phone in after is one of the after moments I flushed. Oh. So like it was still in toilet water, but like at least it wasn't just straight up vomit. God, how much booze did you guys drink that night? How, okay, we'll put it this way: how many bottles? I mean, I think I got down a bottle of vodka by myself. So I mean, we're down our, our third one coming up here. Uh, so you only have to do what's in in the shot glass. You don't have to double up this time. Okay, so I have to do one. Yes. <laughs> we talked about this a little bit prior to the camera rolling, but there are so many artists in the furry community, and what they do to make it in the community. You know, of, you know, various tips, tricks. We talked about art. You know, doing some free stuff initially when you're getting started, but there's always something that eventually catches your attention with an artist that gets you to commission them. What What are some of the things that you look for as a consumer? when you're looking to commission an art piece, style, colors, traditional, digital, what are like the top two things that you look for when you're looking to commission an art piece from someone? Uh, I forgot to mention this earlier, but one another huge reason why I started drawing is because I wanted telegram stickers and things are just too expensive. Because <laughs> like, I don't make a lot of money, but I make enough to get by. So like, for I started drawing as well, so I could draw my own stickers. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, really, when if I want a commission of something, it's usually something that's like I really think that's cute. Like I love stuff that's like really adorable looking, just like st stuff that you want to pick up, like it's just squeeze and hug, like like plushy something or unique. You know, like MLWs are like their their art is just really different and it's simplistic. I, I like to try to stay on the cheaper side, not only because I'm still new, like I've only been drawing for two years. I've never picked up a pen before. Right. Ever. And like this is my first time actually drawing. Um, so I like to stay cheaper just because I'm still a novice and just because like, dude, I understand like, like stuff does cost a lot of money and like it's not everybody has just money just to throw out there but you know what yeah. sometimes people want just a telegram sticker or something or just a little artwork piece but um it, like even still like four dollars i'll spend several hours on one picture i mean i make enough at my weekend job because i'm i do make really good money out there okay work working on just friday saturday and sunday don't get me wrong, I work in a freezer, but they do pay an hour out there. I used to work for a foundry where I worked every day. Like, yeah. I only got one day off a month. Oh. And granted, I made so much money that year, like, I was tossing around cash like it was nothing, but I never lived. Right. So, actually having a weekend a job, a weekend job and having four days off every week, I've learned to just enjoy life again. So. Right, and that's, that's a huge thing. It's like, it's one thing if you can make money, but if you can't enjoy your time, then you yeah. become a slave to the company, and what's the point? It, it was, kind of. It's not worth it. You know, your social life, de your social life deteriorates. You know, it's kind. It kind of is difficult for you to function as an individual in society because you're just like mm, business. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> you know, it's, it's hard. Like, I, totally, I totally understand that. You got. We're gonna go ahead and go to the next one. <laughs> Get that supply. Oh, I have to do another one. Yeah. Me, Jerry. Oh, I'm sorry, Jerry. I didn't see you there. How much of that did you hear? All of it. You were looking right at me. My, my, I mean, my name's Sigma, but... <laughs> How are you feeling? Where are you at? Uh, at a four, going up. Okay. Okay. Because I'm straight up doing shots here. 
All right, so we're, you got the next shot, and you gotta let that process through a little bit. Oh, I have to do another one? No, 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 no. Oh. No, I, that, okay. that was a little bit of time killer. I'm trying to let it process in you so you're not like trying to like hold on to the walls later. Okay. <laughs> so the next question I got for you, I want to touch base on this photo that you that you got posted on your Twitter because this is not only extremely funny, but I saw this. I actually was there in person at MFF last year when this happened, and it brings up a very serious topic within modern society, and it was a big moment in your life in general in the past, but... People who haven't either picked up on it yet, you are not actually genetically female. You've actually transitioned. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I'm, I'm going to bring up the photo here, but you've, tr you've transitioned and you've been on HRT for a while. It's something that you and Battery take in stride and accept it and I think is very super admirable about you and him. So this is the photo that I've actually got. I was there on the fact when you brought him out. Oh, oh, the, the, the. The you, mini keg. Yeah, mini keg. Sir, he Sir Heineken. As that, that was the name of the mini keg. We put glasses and a mustache on him because the mini keg is like this big and has a little spout on it so you can like pour out beer. But we were just doing keg stands off of it. <laughs> now, from what I've experienced so far in the furry community, and part of the reason why I brought, brought that up is, one, it's a phenomenal picture. It's absolutely hysterical. you got the mustache and the spout is kind of his nose and he's holding it like a child. Right. But from what I've experienced so far in the, in the furry community is that we're very accepting to those that have transitioned and anything in between. But I imagine that there are those in the fandom that might not have been. Has there ever been a time where things went completely south for you and got worrisome for you being in the fandom while you were transitioning or after you had transitioned when someone found out that you were, you know, transitioned to who you are? You know, how did you address that type of stuff? I mean... Like, I just try to be polite as possible, but if someone doesn't like what I'm doing, it, I'm sorry, but it's not their decision. Right. It's not their choice. You can say your words if you need to. Get out, get out your anger. You're upset. You can yell at me, call me names. It's okay. Like, I understand. You can voice your opinion. Get your death threats out. It's fine. And people move on. Like, right. I'm, I'm sorry, but... I'm happy. I'm just doing my thing and I'm not hurting anyone, man. I'm just, I'm living my life and just being me. Like, yeah. like no, no one's going to change that. Like, I'm, I'm just so chill with people and their not negativity, not saying it's right or it's okay, but it's not my job to tell them how they need to live. Right. Exactly. And that's, that's something that I think, you know, just given this situation and at least from the furry side, from again, my, my experience, we've been super accepting. And, you know, like you said, you're going to run into those that aren't going to be as accepting. Yeah. There's but, always sour people. But, and but you even mentioned this up, which I, which is a perfect segue into my next question. And, you know, I'm not going to have you do a shot with that. I'll have you do one. Okay. I'm not gonna have you like I'm not good. This isn't a little way, just going shot, 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 yeah. Everybody is on shot, 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 No, but it's a perfect segue to my next question because you're an overwhelmingly positive person. You've responded to several Curious Cat submissions from your Twitter, and I read through most of the ones that oh. found their way onto your Twitter. Some of them are pretty harsh from those other individuals. Yeah. And most of you, most of them were singing praises to you. Now, most people may not either respond, you know, or fight back with words or otherwise act out in some hate, but you, you come at things with the positivity all the time, which is extremely admirable. And, you know, I actually have an example actually up here uh, let's see, they, it said, if Battery like, doesn't like guys, then why is he with you? You're a male, you know, you might think you're, you're female, but you're male. And you said, yeah, because he loves you for more than your genitals. Also, you're, with the, with the correction. <laughs> and I lost Oh, it. my God, I yeah. I thought that was the best. I was just like, not only did you put him in his place, <laughs> but you corrected him in his grammar. It was probably, like, one of, like, oh. the most, like, petty things you could do. <laughs> but I'm just like... Like, I that, was just being silly at that point. I was like, hey, you misspelled this. Yeah, I'm like, that's a big salt to me when I'm just like, not only is your argument invalid, also, you suck at spelling. Here you go. Well, see, there's, there's going to be people who hate, and but the amount of people who hate will never go past the amount of people who actually love and support, even if it's some stranger being like, hey, hey, you're gay, hey, you're straight, hey, you're 
like pansexual, bi, or whatever, there's always going to be more love than hate. How did you end up learning to be calm so positive like that? Because I've come across people that are just like, no, everything sucks and everything. And, and I understand to a threshold that there are those that have mental, mental disabilities or mental conditions that would affect that. But then there's others that are just normal human beings who are just like, life sucks and can go die in a fire. How do, you, how do you ever, have you ever had those moments where you've lost it and kind of snapped or just broke down because it got to you? The most damaged people are the kindest. And I've had a, a lot of shitty past, like very, very shitty past. But I never let the past define me for who I am and how I am today. It's easy for somebody to say, like, oh, this happened, that's why I'm like this, or this happened, that's why I'm like this. We are all the product of our own demise. We choose what we do. You cannot blame it on anything else. Uh, unless if you have like a metal condition, like, 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 I can't walk. Like, oh, you're just not trying. No, I seriously, I can't walk. <laughs> like, yeah. something like that. But when it comes to personality and attitude, like, it's, it's, it's all you, man. It's so much easier to live more carefree and just not give, part of my French, but just not give a f I know it's easier said than done in most situations for people, but I, s I swear life is easier and like just do to be happier. But it's, and it's moments like that where it's like it was, as much as like you're, as much as you think, or maybe some other people think it's just like that's like common knowledge. There's some that there's some that don't, unfortunately. And I kind of live a similar mentality of just like, if something happens, it's whatever. Like I try to like roll with the punches as best I can. But there's a few serious topics that I want to hit on because there's gonna be those people that, you know, whether they come across my videos or they come across you in in the future or whatever. It's like these are things that have happened to you that I got freaking wish someone told me when I was younger and I didn't learn until like the last like three or four years. Love and kindness will make it, it'll, it'll make everything go around. Like, it'll come back to you so quickly. <laughs> Hell yeah. So, how are you feeling? Where are you at? Mm, I'm rocking between four and a half and a five. Okay, we'll give it some time because this next one's actually not going to be a shot. Okay. This is what that blue bowl is for. This is a, this is a, what I call my Spitfire segment. Now, this is normally, you know, what you had brought this up before. This is normally the fursuit crushes from various levels. However, I'm going to change this up a bit. I have, I have that chicken nugget there. I've dressed that in ghost pepper sauce. Ghost pepper? Isn't that really hot? It's about one million. <laughs> so, we're changing this up. I'm not going to have you... I'm not going to have you down the alcohol and then answer the, and then answer the question. I'm going to have you say, like, do, do half of one of those. I'm going to and then answer these questions. I have to eat half of that? Yes. Are you serious? Yes. You got a lot of there. If we need to take a break, I've got, I've got a soy milk downstairs. You'll be fine. Oh my God. Are you serious? I'm going to, I'm going to have you down that and then answer these questions as fast as you can. Okay. Don't, Don't think, think about, about it. it. There, there is no right way to answer uh, your answer. Wait, can I just like, wait, I eat half of it? Yeah, you can, you can eat half of it or all of it. Do I have to? I mean, it's that or you're doubling up on a shot because you're too behind. <laughs> okay, I'll take the hot sauce. <laughs> can I grab a can of Sprite or something? I got the Sprite in the fridge. Can I go grab got some? It. Okay. I, I, got, I got that specifically for this. Okay. I mean, I sweat when I eat sriracha. Granted, I love sriracha and I put it on like everything. All right, hang on. I just ran up and downstairs. Oh. Okay. Okay. You doing all right? Oh, f a duck. F a duck. Ah! Oh, it's so hot. All right. First one, what's, what's your social security, security number? Uh. What's your home state? Uh, Indiana. Scale one to ten. How excited are you to be here? Uh, nine point five. What species is your persona? They're a fox. I cannot sling a dead cat without hitting a fox in this fandom. What's the name of a fur that you have wanted to meet or have met in person? Yeah, I can't think of his name right now, but he was actually really cool. I met him at MFF a little bit. Okay. Name a fur that you have or want to go to dinner with or buy a drink. Like, there's just so many cool people, man. What's the first one that comes to mind? 
Well, go, first thing that comes to mind is you because I'm sitting right here. Okay, next one. Uh, MLW then. Okay, that works. Who, what's a fur that you really wanted to hug in recent history? A fur that I wanted to hug in recent history. God, it's spicy. I wanted to get, wanted to get a hug. Uh, their name is uh, Cake. I don't want to say anything else. They are just like the biggest sweetheart in the world. Like they're such a positive and loving influence on the world. I just, I love them. Last one. Date, marry, kill. Kage, Alkali, Pandas. All right, kill Kage. Okay. <laughs> uh, definitely, uh, I'd say uh, f pandas, and I'd marry alkali because I'd enjoy too much of a time with alkali. <laughs> All right, you're good. We're good. Ugh. All right, got. I don't want to f out. Okay. I feel like I cheated you. I'm sorry. Everyone's had that moment of. Oh my god, I just made a fool of myself. I can't show my face in this fandom. Something like ridiculously embarrassing that you've done. What was your first embarrassing moment from a convention that you had like that? But then what kept you coming back? Because you're clearly still involved in the fandom, but something must have, at one point, something must have made you like second guess yourself, like, I can't do this anymore. I'm too embarrassed. Like, everyone in my life, my work knows. Like, I, I prompt it proudly. I even wore one of our fursuit heads into work for Halloween. Nice. Because I just don't care what anyone thinks of me. That's that's the issue here. So I just, I don't care. Like, if you like me, awesome. If you don't like me, cool. Hey, you can just move on then. Like, yeah. like it, it doesn't, there's six, seven billion people in this world. Like, one person not liking you is not going to end the world. But uh, the rest of that spice is kicking in. So... Not get into crazy uh, details, but I've done a lot of not safe for work content. Uh, not drawing, but actual pictures. And it's been really awkward going into a convention and having people come up and it's just not just, we've discussed this earlier, right. not just saying like, hey, I enjoy your content. It's really cool. It's really good. Thank you. Keep it up. Good job. But people creepily coming up and going like, hey, I've seen you naked. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's not how you approach that, but okay. For you, what's like the best, if there was like say a blanket method that you'd say like, this is probably going to be like the best way that you could approach it for most of those types of situations. What would you tell those types of people? In terms of like, Look, if, if someone has some not safe word content of themselves or their body, it is... Granted, everybody handles the situation differently because we're all right. built differently. Absolutely. But, like, a safe way is to say, like, if it's on a Twitter or if it's on a Telegram or an Instagram or something. Wait, can you do that on an Instagram? I don't, I don't, I don't use know. I don't use Instagram. I don't know. Maybe? Like, sure. but, if, dude, if someone has, like, not safe work content, like, come up and it's... Uh, granted, everybody's different, but for me, if you were to see anything like that and you want to just say, hey, I like what you do, it'd be easier just to come up and say, hey, I've seen your content online. Like, I just wanted to say, like, it's good stuff. You do a good job. Thank you. Like, I enjoyed it. And uh, either stay for a normal conversation or just, like, a hug, wave, hand handshake, whatever, goodbye, whatever. Like, yeah. not saying that people can't, like, stay and talk because right. that's okay. But if you creepily come up and just the first words that come out of your mouth, I said, I've seen you naked. <laughs> I'm like, okay, <laughs> like, that's just an off-putting vibe that, like, like you're wanting already more than you bargained for here, just coming yeah. up and saying hi. <laughs> so, so you had those moments, granted. Yeah, so I've had. So what kept you coming back? Was that more of just kind of like your chill attitude you mentioned before, or was it a different mentality you had to come uh, Dude, I just, I like taking lewd pictures. Uh, not that I'm horny all the time or anything, because I really am not. It's just, I, I like to take pictures. And it's really cool to see people be like, appreciate that. Like, hey, this is a really good picture. Or like, as awkward as it is, when somebody says, hey, this is really hot. Like, it is a motivational booster. Like, like if somebody, like, tells you how good you look, it is kind of rewarding. Yeah. Like, for something like that. So, I mean, that stuff is always nice. But, like, I've been also trying to focus more on drawing than lewds. Because I'd rather get known for art. If I'd rather somebody come up to me at a convention saying, hey, I've seen your art and I like your art, than anything else. So we got three more. So we got question eight, question nine, question 20. Wait, so am I supposed to down anything? Yes, now. Which one? How many? Um, 
How are you feeling about a, how a full shot? Like mix two of them together? Yeah. Okay. You, f you okay? Yeah. We're going red though. Would well, you not like green ranger? I just really like the color red. Oh, okay. Like a lot. You do know that those are all the Power Ranger ones, right? Yeah, but my family wouldn't let me watch Power Rangers when I was a little kid. Boo. Be because after watching one episode of Power Rangers, I went around kicking everything in the house, including my sister. So my mom's like, nope, no more Power Rangers. <laughs> I never got to see another episode. <laughs> oh, that's terrible, but that's great. Fandom's always coming out with newer artists. We talked about this a little bit. Art styles, new people, each passing day. But I can only imagine that it gets extremely difficult to get your name out there and let alone big enough to get commissions. If I was a newer artist, what are, say, two key pointers and tips that you could give me to help, that have helped you along the way that you would share with me? I don't really call myself an artist. I call, I call myself more of a cartoonist because when I, th in my personal opinion, when I think of artists, I think of the people who can draw beautiful pictures, shading, illustrations, beautiful backgrounds and stuff. Me, I'm just really new and all I do is just mainly draw funny cartoon characters. So therefore, I really correlate myself more of an art, uh, a cartoonist than an artist. But if somebody who's trying to get in the same line as what I was doing and getting quote unquote my level. Like I don't really no, don't, don't even see it as your level. Just like, like someone, someone that was like you just like I don't know where to start. Like what like what are like the two key tips practice, that you practice, need? practice, practice. Just keep drawing. You gotta keep drawing. All, draw all the time. Draw all the time. You have to like <laughs> seriously, that's the biggest thing. Like people will say like I want I wanna learn how to draw and they'll like attempt to draw it once and then they'll stop. And they won't ever draw again. I'm like, no, you, like as difficult as it is to sit down and get into it for some people or whatever, you just, you got to draw. You got to draw. You just got to sit there and just keep busting it out. Just keep drawing as many as you can. Definitely, uh, if you're very new, I would always suggest like saying, hey, please, can you, someone just send me a ref and I'll draw you something for free. It won't be fancy or anything. But uh, especially when, if people do give you their sonas to draw and there's difference and variations of sonas that is amazing because it gives you practice with different kind of like animals or whatever or creatures yeah. like not just just wolves or just cats like if people right. have bats or uh fishes like Aves. dogfish or whatever yeah uh, dragons. yeah yeah like that i definitely say uh you, you just got to keep at it and if you if you want to get if you want to get into practice and more practice uh, ask for free art, like not ask for free art. Ask to do for free art. Right. Draw. Just you got to keep drawing. No. What? Not to expand on that. Outside of those two pointers, what are two pointers that you received, or that you've asked and then got feedback on as an artist, your or cartoonist yourself? Just like, hey, like you could do X or Y, or like you should really look into this program or this, you know, um, like this particular method of doing something, whether that was a tablet doing traditional or maybe even tutorials? Like what were two key pointers for you that kind of helped you, like the biggest that can come to mind? Outside of those two that you mentioned, of practice and then doing the free art to start getting the ball rolling for yourself. Um, references. Um, definitely for me, uh, not trying to copy, not tracing, never trace. Like uh, the only time I've quote ever trace is I'll take a physical picture of myself and I will Put that picture in Photoshop because do pay for Photoshop. Ten bucks a month for online storage for your cloud, so all your stuff saved. And for this amazing program, dude, it's it's worth it. My computer's crashed twice, and all my art has been saved. Um, but sincerely, uh, like, just reference. You look at a reference. If you have a picture, if you have first suit head, set it next to your side, and just get an image and start draw drawing the first suit or yeah. something the references always help when you have something you're looking at and so, I would never suggest taking anything from online to trace but sometimes if you trace something it does help you get a better understanding of anatomy um, but that's probably the second point anatomy learn anatomy seriously if 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 you understand the human body if you're trying to draw like non degrade or even uh, even animals. If you learn the animal anatomy, it's going to be so much easier.
for you to visualize, okay, I understand how this muscle works, like right here in a leg, or uh, how, how the back's supposed to be arched right here and where. Right. It's, it's seriously like anatomy. And just practice, man. I'm at a five. You're at a five? Okay, no, I'm not, not trying to kill you, so we're probably at like peak, peak level. At, at an at a eight is when I start calling it. We've got to give, give you some room to, to hang out. I've done most of them. So, where are we at? there's uh, four pink, shots left. Pink, black, okay. Yeah, no, that's perfect. You, you have the panel that we've talked about before. Yeah. Drunken Doodles. The Drunken Doodles panel. Your, your first panel was immensely successful at raising money. It was very interest. successful. Yeah, super successful. Yeah. Now, I imagine you have the artists uh, stay very busy during that panel. Mm -hmm. No cartoonists or regular artists, doesn't matter. They're super busy. You got yeah. people donating money to have like quick. Uh, how long does it take for something like that to get knocked out at that panel? I wasn't there for it. Uh, I'll explain, explain this process real quick. And if, if anybody wants this process, please do it. Like, spread this stuff around. You can't use it at MCFC because that's mine. I've claimed it. Um, but um, what happens is. Uh, we do uh, quick sessions here yeah. of what's going to be uh, like five to ten minutes of drawing and then like uh, five minutes of reflecting because what, what we do is I have four artists on the table and me as the hostess and I have their art being streamed on a on a projector right. so everybody can watch what's going on and when you when you come in you you come in knowing that it is there is not safe for work content, yep. and uh, some of it is goofy. Um, I've created over 120 different scenarios, and then I, I use a random generator to just click on one, and that will be your situation. Yeah. And one of the artists does a doodle, not a fine sketch, not a fully beautiful picture, but a doodle uh, for it to be on screen. So all the artists are sitting there working, but uh, before they do that, every time they do it, they do a shot. Oh, I did not know this. It's drunken doodles. Yeah, like I figured, like, oh, you guys like pre game, like, no, like, you guys are like shot, dude. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it wasn't, I was so, like, peeved off at Battery Acid Leak. Like, that whole day, I was like, hey, please, you gotta stay sober a little bit. I know this is MCFC, and at cons, I let you run wild because I don't care how much you drink or what you do, whatever. Like, yeah. you're at a con, you're on your vacation, do your thing. But you gotta hold back. Before with that panel even started, he was already six beers in. Oh jeez. I was like, he's son of a bitch. <laughs> I was just, ugh. So, so as I mentioned before, I wasn't aware of, uh, you know, I wasn't there for it. I don't know the details on it. But I do have a question regarding that. Yeah. Because uh, I'm gonna try my hardest to be there this year. But do they, do the artists take all ten minutes of that, or did some of them get done like super fast? Like, what was like the fastest turnaround you had there at? MLW like, did stuff. Quick. Oh, oh God. It, it was probably ML with like five minutes. Well, geez. What, so, since you mentioned that, what was the, do you remember what like the doodle prompt was? Dude, I was drinking that whole time. <laughs> uh, and it was, it was, yeah, it was our first time running this panel as well. And it was complete chaos. Chaos. It was unreal. Having a small room like that and like the room was beyond, it was beyond packed. It was so crazy having that many people in that tiny room. And I was, one of the runners came up and said, hey, there's people in a line waiting out in the hall. To try to get in. To try to get into this panel. And uh, because what was going on uh, is like, um, I think it was $10, $10 or 20 I don't, I'd have to look back on it. Also, I've been drinking, but um, <laughs> uh, it was like it was like ten dollars to twenty dollars, and all no one took any money. It all went to charity. Yeah. Every single cent. We did not take any of it. All these artists were coming here, working on this stuff completely for free, uh, just drinking booze and having a good time and raising money for the charity. So, was there one that uh, that chimes out to you in your head regarding that panel? Billy yeah. Mays here. Uh, MLW had to do a sticker. Not I keep calling them stickers, but a little sketch of like somebody said Billy Billy Mays here, and it was a lewd situation. Oh jeez. Yeah. Mm, at a five, maybe if I'm going down. We'll do we'll do a half of one. So okay. just one of those. Okay. So, so I've got, got the final question here. 
final question is actually less of a question and actually more of a challenge. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to find like some computer paper. I'm going to grab some of the art supplies that I got that was like way back when I was in like college. Just like basic, basic shit. Five minutes. I want to see you do a drunken doodle. It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. You can't do traditional. You're going to learn. You're going to attempt it. <laughs> and I want to see what you can do. Doing it for the fun of it. Oh. All I want you to do is to sketch my soda dabbing. I didn't just draw you a picture. Oh, you know, just hurry up and do it. Dude, you suck. <laughs> you love me, though. <laughs> I do, but I'm not good at traditional. That's it. And you mentioned it yourself. You gotta just keep drawing. I, you do. I know. But I'm. All my practice has been in digital. Because <laughs> I can. You'll be fine. Okay. <sighs> Right. Okay. okay. Thank you so much for coming out here and doing this to be able to interview you. I, I've known you for a while. I think I think we can kind of consider ourselves very good friends. Yeah, you know, dude. Kind of I, w stuff. I would not have driven driven out here if I didn't consider you a good friend. Which is very nice to hear. <laughs> <laughs> so seriously, thank you so much for coming out here. Any of you out here that actually like what what you've seen so far, you want to follow Luna on Twitter. You want to find out what they are. Uh, I post all my new art to uh, Twitter. Okay, and I actually got that up here. If I'm going to dodge my head, I've got it. It's it's a very long legged. It's a Luna underscore the cute. I'll have a link in the description down below as well as I'll have it at the very bottom of the tag right around here. You can just type in my name. My legal name is Luna, Luna Steinman and on Google and you pretty much come up with like everything I'm in and you will find my FA, but you will find a lot of my old art. All right. Please don't judge. <laughs> <laughs> so seriously, thank you so much you for coming out judge. here. I'll, and if you like what you see, find her there. Uh, we're probably going to be drinking a little bit more here, but you've also Hells never yes. been to round one. Nope. So my videos showcase a little bit of round one. That actually might be changing. Um, the group the group that manages that actually might have to change venues because they won't let us do suits anymore. Oh. We'll go into details of that later, but I want to show you what round one is, and so I'm going to show you that. I'm going to show you one of my favorite games that's out there, and they actually have, it's a barcade, so. I love barcades. Yeah, so we're pre-gaming a little bit, then we're going to go out there, going to have a great time, but seriously, thank you all so much for coming out here. I'm Sydney the Wolf. I got Luna the Cute here visiting me. Thank you all for joining us. You guys have a great day, and let's go have some fun. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.